political perspective. We've got him back. Chris Waterman sitting right here with an opinion. Hey, Maxie. Well, imagine you having an opinion. Well, uh, it's, look at um, that. it's very unusual for me to have an opinion. Hey, last week we talked about the Auckland mayoralty. I think maybe you know it was a Vogue topic. The media this week has been full of the fallout of uh, Leo Malloy, Guy Williams today, New Zealand Today uh, uh, interview. What did you think? Satire, not satire? Disaster, not a disaster? Disaster for Leo. I felt it was. Leo tried to be funny. I think he was trying to be funny and get really stern with, and it just backfired on him. He come across as something obnoxious and crude and rude. He just really sold him badly. Just a bully who I didn't think um, portrayed what I think people want in a mirror, right? Uh, well, it probably showed his real personality. I mean, I he's, a, he's a man real who owns a pub, you know, rough and tumble. You know, touching the guy's genitals and things like that and um, saying the F word every second word, I just don't know. I don't think it did him any good. I think I think if you you have to remember, that show is a satire. It's a it's a comedy show. Mm-hmm. They go out and they And I think people. Leo was trying to be funny as well. And I think the political satire may may have been lost in that. Oof, totally. Did Guy Guy Williams has been criticized for platforming Leo? I I think that's unfair. So do I. I agree with that. Uh, I think I think, you know, if you look at it in a in a Satirical lens is quite a different story. Um, if I put uh, the lens of it, which is Leo's running for a very serious uh, office in our community, um, it's a it's an office that needs to have some dignity. Did he cover himself in dignity? No, he didn't. I tell you what, Leo will run once and lose once uh, this Auckland mayoralty. On that, I gotta say, um, you know, last week I said that Craig Lord ran twice, lost oh, yeah, twice. Yeah, yes, that was wrong. Craig's only run once, lost once, uh, and he's having a second crack at it this time. Craig Lord, thank you for coming on. And, well, coming on. Thank you for commenting, and uh, we, we we do apologise for that. You only lost once, not twice. So, I mean, that's fair enough that you actually corrected us on that. And, um, I look, uh, we wish you the best of luck, but I think it's really those three contenders at the top, and I think Leo's lost a lot of votes. Oh, I think it's, I think the three contenders now are Afiso, Viv, Wayne. Wayne, that's right, four with Leo, Leo those he three, was hanging on the bottom. And Leo's probably now hanging on the bottom. Well, yeah, really unfortunately, he, he, I think the next thing, that, that campaign will go away, will regroup, will think about the next steps, uh, and what they need to probably do is present Leo in a more mirror light, a more but serious just situation. Just to get onto that, I mean, we shouldn't ponder this too long because we've got other subjects to get onto, but how many people actually saw it, or do you think they've heard about watching? Did you actually see the interview? I no, actually, actually saw the boxing match. Um, I went back and looked at it. I went. I had to go back and watch it. But you're a political zealot. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, and true. me. So we are interested. What about the common man on the street? That's interesting. The people I've spoken to um, either don't care about local government, or they watched it and they went, "Oh, that's a bit seedy. I don't really like it." Well, you know, because only what thirty percent. Last yeah, time. about that in the in the low thirty percent. So seventy percent of our population in Auckland here don't even give a hoot. Unfortunate, but this has spiced it up. So maybe there's a bit of a tension there. But as someone said, Leo keeps getting more and more publicity. His name now. How many times have we said it today? Oh, about ten. He doesn't deserve it. All right, so should we talk about something else then? Let's switch from local government to central government. Something that the world's talking about: the cost of living. Oh, oh my God! You picked it. Cost of living. It's so, been done to death, but let's do it. It's been lighting up uh, the boards and talkback stations all across uh, New Zealand today. I listened to a bit of talkback um, around rents and mortgages, um, obviously connected to the cost of living. Max, you were, you were in the radio station last week. Did you hear about the same stuff? Yes, it's common. And look, CPI getting announced yesterday, was it yesterday? 7.3%. Yep, and that's huge. Um, that's a massive pull. So the, I think most of the population realise that means the cost of living for them is going up and up and up. And if you compare it to a year ago, cost of petrol up a dollar twenty a litre, cost of rent four hundred one hundred forty dollars a week, cost of your mortgage three hundred forty dollars a week. Those are significant amounts of money. And the big one was construction costs. But getting back to the fuel one, diesel. I can't believe this has gone up about ninety percent. But in the last quarter, it went up thirty percent. Quarter. That's, that's only in four months. That's a direct result. What that will mean is three months. Your broccoli will be more expensive. Your your goods will be more expensive. The clothing you buy will be more expensive. Oh, well, just don't eat broccoli. I'm happy with that. It goes that transport cost goes into everything that right. we consume. Everything. That's right. A diesel that drives. I mean, we were in the supermarket business, but that it, everything gets delivered in a diesel truck. Everything. Well, except, you know, I see Fonterra released this week their first... Um, oh, yeah, they did too. Milk Hydrogen. E. Hydrogen. Yeah, Hydrogen. yeah, their first... Um, Steam-driven uh, car. Yeah, well, I think it was an electric milk tanker. The cost of... The average cost of an average mortgage has gone up just under $1,000 a month 
in the last year. If you're a first home buyer or a young people starting out or with a family, where are you finding that extra thousand oh, dollars a month? Look, that's bad enough. But what about those people who just survive on the minimum wage? I don't know how they even live. I mean, paying rent as well. So that's that's two two lots of people we've identified there. The first home buyers, if they've actually committed and bought a house, they're mm-hmm. going to be struggling to make their mortgages. And then we've got those people on minimum wage. They won't make it. Those two lots of people won't. What proportion of the population would that be? Must be in the like what thirty percent of our well, population. Well, if you think about the median wage, the median wage is just under seventy percent. Oh, sorry, seventy thousand dollars. I think it's in the in the low sixties. I mean that that's a lot of New Zealanders who, uh, I think the government said um, with the cost of living payment that comes out in August, two point one million New Zealanders will get that. So two point one million New Zealanders earn seventy thousand dollars or less to qualify for that cost of living. And look, this government are planning to up the wages. Very, very good. There's a lot of businesses who won't survive that. And I look after the small business sector. And if that happens, there's going to be a lot of unemployment. I just don't think, I think that the cost of, of keeping our people is going to go up and up, the cost of the government to keep our people. Well, minimum, minimum wage increases generally haven't had an impact on inflation that we've seen in the past that 10 years. That blew me away. Right? I thought it would have, yeah. Uh, particularly in the past 10 years because the economy has been uh, relatively strong. Mm-hmm. We're now in very rocky waters around um, inflation running at this high has to do two things. One is the government needs to start to talk down inflation and show restraint in their own fiscal policy. What I mean by that is we shouldn't go away and start lobbing off uh, parts of our government or, or cutting expenses because the, 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 the thing that we come back to is the big drains on the government coffers are social welfare, health, education. And I don't think anybody would really argue too much that those three things are kind of critical. But we have to... The, the government needs to start to show some restraint around, I don't know, maybe the, the fit-outs of the uh, minister offices, $24 million. Yeah, but there's all these people that are employing. And they've, they've just increased their, the population of, of public servants enormously. And yet we are still short on doctors and nurses and firefighters. Those are the real workers. But these are public servants who just sit around and push paper and give facts to the government. I think if you look at the Ministry of Transport, or is it Waka Kautohi, they're... they're Com staff has doubled, maybe, in, in, uh, under this government, 56 to over 100. I mean, the, the opposition can pull out reams and reams of this stuff every day in Parliament to talk about. But have the, I understand this because they have a narrow perspective, I think, this government, and I understand that Robinson's looking at, he's getting an increase in taxation. So he's getting more money into his coppers. Is, was that sound correct to you, Chris? That, that is that is true. And that's mostly due to and, bracket creep within, within... And that's losing his perspective. He's going, well, actually, we're getting more of this money into what we had before. We can spend more on, on saving the economy, which is completely wrong in terms of inflation. Am I right? Particularly when we talk about... Uh, that squeeze middle, right? $70,000 $70, was when um, the cost of living allowance clicked on that and under. That... $70,000 is not far away from the second highest tax bracket, right? That that kicks in at, at $75-ish thousand dollars. And then the other one is well, we have 150 grand plus. That that You're paying 30, 33% on that. That's a lot. It's a lot of tax. It's a lot of tax. And actually, the the average punter who's earning just under 70 grand, they're going to go to their boss and say, I don't want to pay rise. Now, Chris, look, this is my world. It's the employment world. But what we're seeing, this government of introducing a new legislation called Fair Pay, and it's going to impose um, higher wages on, on businesses, which is, you know, all we all sound like, well, that's great. That puts more money into the pocket of the workers. But unfortunately, some of these businesses can't afford it. They'll either up their price or they'll shut the door. And I think that's what we've seen a lot of, is a lot of them shutting the doors of recent or, times. Or they'll stop employing people. So wages are one of those variable costs, semi-variable, well, I think. that's the first thing they cut, is wages, because that's a, that's a pretty hefty expense. And then, and then you know, the, the people who run the cafe across the road, they'll just work harder themselves, rather than employing that's uh, exactly what's happening one or two there. people. And that, that's when you start to see, you know, the cost of your of your coffee might go up over there, uh, your smashed avocados if you're a millennial, whatever. But the, the, the reality is that money not being spent in the economy drives down uh, employment. And if you shift it to having to pay your mortgage or whatever, it, it, it 
reduces the amount of capital that's available. So, in your what's company. your speculation? What do you think this government will do when, when actually the inflation goes up and people are starting to suffer? I mean, yeah, look, uh, incredibly, well, they're going to be able to feed themselves. I mean, that's going to be a question that government will have to respond to. The biggest cost of living package that the government has done currently is us spending around about five hundred million dollars a quarter reducing excise tax on on, on fuel. Uh, and using public transport, they can't continue to roll out, you know, a two billion dollar program. Oh, it like sounded that. all really nice. We'll give you half price transport again, and we're extending it. Isn't that good of us? We're so kind to you. Yeah, and that's coming from taxation, but it comes out of road maintenance, right? That that money that we're not collecting to maintain and build new roads is oh, going to come back okay, to buy. Is that us, where it comes from, right? Those road user charges. This government going into an election year in May of next year, in their budget next year, can't afford, like politically, can't afford to put tax, that tax, that 25 cents, back on petrol. It, it, it would be suicide. It certainly would be. I think they would lose the election just like that. Well, it would be booted out. Right? And here's what I fear. They will use something like the community services card uh, to push down the cost of petrol for particular groups in a targeted manner. But the, the squeezed middle, that that's those people mm-hmm. earning seventy thousand dollars or the less. The productive sector I would call them. You know, they're not going to they're not going to get a hell of a lot of relief from having a community services card because they don't qualify. And that's when we have to start to look the 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 productive New Zealanders right in that middle band whose taxes aren't going down whose wages are going up with inflation and being pushed into higher tax brackets, that's a real that's a real problem. Certainly is, and that takes me back, because I'm old enough to go back in time, because I recall the inflation rising heavily when the last time they had this similar wage system where they put um, wage freezes in place. But that was, you know, people were very resentful of those people getting the dole, as we called it in those mm. days. And they used to say, dole bludges, and then a lot of them would scratch their head and go, is it worth actually being working and being productive or am I better off just go and sit at home like they do and do nothing and get uh, just a paltry little bit of our money but uh, it'll be good good standard of living so absolutely not I think we've got to be really clear that the um, hourly rate on the dole is something like seven dollars an hour it's it's a it's a meager existence uh, and, and we should not no one sets out to want to be on the dole and I think, you know, we're all only kind of three major life events away from poverty, right? Like, you know, New Zealanders last year saved something like uh, $340 on average in that year. Um, so we, we're, not, we're, not, <laughs> we're, not a, we're not a community of savers. And, um, no way. No way. But the thing is I'm worried about is how bad will this recession get and how bad will the, the, the low-income people of our society and those heavily mortgaged, are going, well, how much are they going to suffer and how much can they take? And I, and I don't, the government doesn't have any easy answers between now and the election next year to, to, to come to the table with that. Well, that's another year to go. Well, no, 14 months, isn't it? 14, yeah. So they have to have an election before the end of next year. Wow. It's going to be in the heat of it, isn't it, Chris? So, I mean, all I can say... What, I mean, this is, I think, even your prediction, the government is just going to hand out cash to try and save save themselves I and think so. keep their office. Non-productive spending going into the economy. Wow. I think, I, I think the population of New Zealand is becoming more mature and more aware that, look, handing cash out is going to have an inevitably bad ending. Hopefully they will when they're actually deciding who they're going to vote for. And I think that, um, you know, if you look at the other levers of of uh, inflation, it's not just government spending. In fact, government spending, their spending makes up around about 30% of the economy. If you look at the other 70%, in Australia today, some research out that says one of their key drivers of inflation is record profits from big businesses. Mm. And those big businesses are hedging the fact that their profit margins are going to be cut because of rising fuel costs, rising wage pressure, lack well, of supply. Same thing as we've got here. So they, they are banking now um, to make sure that they, they are okay. We really, we really need the government to start to reverse virtual signal and start to show some restraint in their spending to encourage businesses to do the same. Well, and look, where we started off, and I haven't, I didn't disagree with you then, but I'm going to now, but I think we should start slashing. I know that sounds radical, but slashing some of those government departments, getting rid of those excessive uh, number of staff, and they need to act on it ASAP. Because the other thing is, is that the doom and gloom in our society, and listen to us, we're full of it today, doom and gloom, but it's getting higher, and it's self-perpetuating, isn't it? I think on some level it is self-perpetuating. 
Government departments need to be focused on the value that they are giving back to the taxpayer. So Bill English, when he was the finance minister, came out with uh, better public service targets. He challenged every government ministry to go away and understand what it is they actually do and to target the outcomes that they were looking for. All the other stuff started to become defunded as they moved towards their core business. That's what government departments need to start doing again. What is their core business? How are they adding value to the taxpayer? Bring back Bill English. What yeah. are we talking about next week? Uh, look, we'll figure it out. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see what happens during the week and respond to that. Done. All right, Easy mate. Peasy. Chris, thank, Thanks, good mate. to see you, old friend.